All right, so in this video tutorial, we will learn how we can simulate flooding or sea level rise in a region in GIS environment. Simulating floods uh, allows the decision makers to visualize the impacts of flooding on public infrastructures, critical facilities, and uh, vulnerable populations. So uh, the only data that we need to uh, simulate the flood is the digital elevation model or DEM of this study area. I already have downloaded the DEM of my study area, which is Cuyahoga County in Ohio. In ArcMap environment, uh, you need to uh, go to the customize menu, extensions, and then uh, check spatial analyst. You have to make sure that you have checked on a special analyst extension and then close. And uh, we need to also load the digital elevation model in this uh, in the arc map. So from add data, navigate to where you downloaded your uh, DEM and then select the DEM and then click on add. So uh, as you can see, the elevation uh, in this study area in Cuyahoga County in Ohio uh, ranges from 173 meters to 391 meters. And uh, also, if you uh, right click on the DEM and then select properties, and if you go to the source tab here, you can see more information about the digital elevation model. For example, the number of columns and rows, because uh, this is a matrix of values and each pixel has a value, number of bands, one band, Cell size or pixel size is almost 30 meter, which means that each pixel uh, corresponds to 30 meter underground. The formats, uh, we have information about the extent, about the coordinate information, North American datum, Albers, and uh, the units of the measurements, and also some statistics about the, the values of the uh, of the digital elevation model. For example, the minimum value, minimum was 173, the maximum 391, and mean standard deviation, and so on. Click OK. I would like to create a base elevation raster grid from this digital elevation model. So it shows the uh, minimum elevation, which is 173 meters, okay? So if you uh, click on search here, or you can click on search bottom here, uh, here, uh, type reclassify. So I'm going to uh, create a base height of 173. So reclassify a spatial analyst. And uh, I'm going to reclassify this to uh, raster grid with the value of 173. So my input raster is going to be this DEM. And uh, I'm going to class it, reclassify it into one class. All right, now click on classify and we're going to have just one class and then click OK. And the old values, all values here is going to be converted to the value of 173 as the base height. And I'm going to save this as base height. OK, and then uh, check missing values to no data and then OK. All right, so as you can see, you got a raster. It only has one value, a 173. And if you open up the attribute table of this raster, so the value is going to be 173. And here is the number of the pixels with the value of 173. It's over 1,279,000 uh, pixels. So if you want to understand what is the, uh, the total area, you can, uh, so the, each pixel is 30 meter by 30 meter, right? So 30 meter by 30 meter times the number of the pixel size, it gives you the total area of the study region. So now that we have the uh, base height and also the digital elevation model, so for 3D visualization and making animation, uh, we use Arc Scene module. Okay, so from uh, Start menu, Arc GIS, if you select Arc Scene, and uh, in this environment, we need to load the digital elevation model and also base height and make both of them 3D. All right, so let's load the digital elevation model first. So this was what our digital elevation model. Click add data. So this is our DEM and it's flat. So if you use this navigation, navigate button, you can see that it's a 
So it's a flat layer. We have to make it 3D. Okay, so how we can do it? If you right click on digital elevation model properties, and then if you go to the base heights tab, and here it says uh, how we can get the elevation, uh, how we can make this 3D. Okay, so we're going to get the elevation for this layer from itself. Okay. So uh, we choose floating on a custom surface and we're going to get the elevation from itself, which is DEM Kai Ovoga. Okay, so uh, click OK. So now this layer is 3D, but uh, the problem is that it is uh, the variations of height is not very noticeable. So we need to increase the vertical exaggeration. So if you right click on scene layer, scene properties, and here in the general tab, you can increase the vertical exaggeration manually or uh, arc mm, scene can automatically find the optimum uh, vertical exaggeration. Okay, so if you click on calculate from extent, uh, arc scene can find you the optimum exaggeration, which is 27. So if you, you can also change the background color, it's white, you can change it to other color if you wish. But when you're happy with this exaggeration and background color, click apply and okay. Now we can better see the topographical changes. You can see valleys, depressions, you can see rivers uh, in the study area. You can also change the symbology, for example, from uh, this one, for example, from a red to blue. And then if I invert it, because I wanna have the red as the highest value. So if I check invert and then okay, so red value shows the high elevation uh, and blue value shows low elevation. You can zoom in and they can better see the variations of the height, okay, uh, in the study in this region. So, uh, and if you, for example, select identify button and then click on that, it shows you the pixel value shows the elevation, okay? So each uh, value of the pixel shows elevation. For example, in this area, we have elevation 180, but for example, in this area, the elevation is 360. So the darker, so the darker uh, red values shows higher uh, elevation and the darker blue shows uh, lowland areas, okay? So uh, the next thing is that we also need to add the base height uh, raster grid that we just created. So again, I click on add data, so where did I save the base height? After I, in the here, I saved the base height uh, in the geo database, which wasn't a good place. So let me export it in the animation and then add. So I'm gonna save it as base height and then save. So, so now I have it in my edge drive rather than in the geo database, which can be uh, temporary, okay? so. Again, uh, click on add data and then base height is in this folder and then add. So here I'm going to make this base height 3D as well. So right click on this base height properties, go to the base heights. And then again, how we can get the elevation information. Elevation is gonna be 173 meters, right? So I'm gonna get the elevation from itself, which is base height and apply and okay. So now if you uh, use the navigate button, you can see that, so this elevation is underneath our study area, which makes sense because this one is 173 and this one starts from 173 something. So uh, let me change the color of base height. Uh, I'm gonna use bright blue. Uh, so for, for example, water body, so this one is okay because this one is not dark blue. This one is for flat, okay? All right, so this is our base height and this is our study and this is our digital elevation model. Bright blue will serve as the flood. Okay, so we're gonna change the elevation. So we're gonna uh, change the elevation for this base height from 173 and gradually increase the elevation to represent the flood. Okay, so now that we have both layers in 3D, we can simulate flood. So if you right click on this gray area and then select animation, or if you go to the customize and then select animation. So from animation toolbar, uh, we need to click on animation and then select animation manager. 
So here, make sure that you are in keyframe uh, tab and the keyframe of, uh, keyframes of type is layer and then click on create. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna increase the height of this base height uh, layer to simulate the flood. Okay, so we're gonna in gradually increase the height of it. So the type is layer, the source object is gonna be the base height because we're gonna increase this layer, the elevation for this layer. And then click new. So, and after that, you have to click on create. So we're gonna have 10 times steps, okay? So I'm gonna click on create 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and then close. And here, scroll up, and in the translation Z, I'm gonna input the values showing increment of elevation. So it's gonna be, for example, 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. All right, so uh, after that, click on close. All right, now that we set the time steps, so from animation toolbar, if you click on this one, open animation control, and then select options. So we're going to say that uh, we're gonna make 15 second animation. You can, it depends on you. You can create 10 second animation, 20 second, uh, uh, 15 second animation of flooding. So I select 15 and I'm gonna, uh, so everything is okay, but for play mode, I'm gonna show that uh, how the study area uh, will fill up and also how it will discharge, okay? A flood. So I'm going to play it uh, forward and reverse. So it's up to you how to represent the, or simulate the flood. And after that, click on play. So what happens, as you can see, so the elevation of this base height will increase. And after we reach 100, so it, then it will discharge. So um, so you can see that the elevation goes down. So probably you cannot see the effect, but if you uh, stop this, and uh, then if you change your perspective to uh, vertical, okay, from this angle. So let me move this to top, and then uh, from navigate, so it is like the vertical perspective, right? Now, if you uh, click on play, uh, you can see uh, which areas first will be affected by flood, okay? So obviously, lowland areas with lower elevation will be at, uh, at the highest risk of flood. And uh, after that, you can see how the flood will discharge, okay? So again, uh, this can be used to visualize the impact of uh, flood on public infrastructure, critical facilities, and vulnerable uh, populations. Also, the results can help uh, decision makers to plan for uh, road closures or uh, prioritize evacuation areas in emergency management, okay? All right, so uh, the last step, how we can export this as a short movie, okay, or as, as an animation. If you close this one and then animation and then export animation, so it will be, so for example, I'm gonna export it in desktop or I'm gonna save it in my edge drive, export, and then for example, flood uh, underscore Ohio, and then so click on export. And after that, okay. So what happens is that it will create an AVI file that you can share it with public or other organization. So if we, once finished, if we go to the desktop that I uh, downloaded it, I can find this and use it in my presentation or share it with public or other organizations. So you can see that Flood Ohio has been added and uh, you can use it in your presentation.